The pandemic has wreaked havoc on the global economy. Cities locked down, production lines ground to a halt. But demand for all sorts of goods has never been higher. And it's causing a crisis in the complex web that is the global supply chain. Christmas is coming, but this year it will be different. There'll be less on the shelves and you may need to pay more for some goods. That's because nearly every link in the supply chain is experiencing some sort of delay. From the factory where goods are made, to the containers that bring them into the country, to the delivery service that gets them to the store and on to your door. So how did all this start and how do we fix it? Remember back to the very beginning of the pandemic at the start of 2020. First Wuhan, then right across China, cities were locked down. Hundreds of millions of people were put under some form of restriction and thousands of factories that make the goods we love to buy shut down or slowed. Then the virus spread to the US, Europe, the rest of Asia. Around the world, production lines closed because of outbreaks and restrictions. At a source level, the issue really came down to raw materials and then availability of labour. So we'd, we'd reduced working load because of COVID safe operations. We saw a significant decrease in the amount of output from source locations for things like automotive, things like uh, electronic clothing, toys, and other things that are very imported into Australia. At the same time, hundreds of millions of people were stuck at home, unable to spend money on holidays or going out. So what did we do? We shopped online. In Australia, online shopping has been growing since 2015, but the pandemic has been a game changer. This September set a record for online retail sales, nearly four and a half billion dollars that month alone. It's a similar picture elsewhere, in the UK and the US. And most of the consumer goods we order online are made overseas. But even as the vaccines rolled out and the production lines got going again, we hit the next bottleneck, transporting the goods. Obviously we're in a global economy, a lot of production will take place in Asia, but then the goods will be shipped to uh, the US, North America, to Europe, us to here in Australia. Um, there's frankly not enough ships right now to cope with demand, particularly on some of those major routes from Asia to North America and Europe. 90% of the world's cargo is transported by sea and we simply don't have enough ships. There are currently around 200 cargo vessels being built, but they're not going to be ready for two years or so. There's a lot more demand than supply, and that means the price of shipping has gone up. Right up. This is what's happened to the average cost of a shipping container since the pandemic began. It's gone up fivefold. Ships are backed up at ports around the world. And look what that does to the delays and the costs. While the numbers of days delayed grows on the worst hit China-US West Coast routes, the price of a container just keeps rising. In California, there has been unprecedented disruption with estimates of a staggering $24 billion worth of goods stuck outside the ports. At one stage, up to 500,000 containers were sitting on cargo ships waiting to be unloaded. In the US and the UK, there also aren't enough truck drivers to move the goods once they're on shore. Things aren't as bad here in Australia, though of course delays at foreign ports affect us too. When the ships come to Australia, they're a bit late and that's delayed some of the vessels being in. And more recently, we've had some COVID cases of our own, as well as some industrial relations issues, which has meant that the throughput of the goods through the port has slowed down. It's likely that we're not going to be as impacted as other parts of the world because we're not fully plugged in and, and exposed to those particularly congested and tight routes at the moment. So it's not so bad here, which is the good news, but it's all relative. Logistics experts say we're not just dealing with pandemic related issues. There are long term structural problems in our supply chain. 
in terms of the domestic landscape, um, we have an infrastructure problem in Australia and that problem is being caused by 10 years development in e-commerce generating a, a change in infrastructure and that is warehouses, trucks, uh, shipping containers, everything coming into Australia has need, needed to increase. But in some cases that's a two year turnaround to get that much volume into Australia. So, what can you expect in the lead up to the holidays and longer term? Electronics are most affected because of a shortage of microchips for computers. Apple is reportedly having to redirect computer chips that were destined for iPads to the iPhone 13 to meet demand. The car industry has also been hit hard. Toyota cut its production by 40% in September because it couldn't get enough chips to run everything from electric windows to power steering. But everything from uh, furniture to toys and others will have an impact. So not great news for consumers, but perhaps even worse for business, especially small businesses, which just don't have the capital to buy in bulk or pay the freight costs. Freight costs are very, very expensive. They're put at the back end of the supply chain. They're left till last. And it means that it really affects their abilities to snap back after these horrendous lockdowns. And it means that those potential sales, especially leading into Christmas, uh, are not going to be there for small businesses. And it's hugely problematic. Once goods are onshore, businesses still face delays. COVID outbreaks at delivery centres, workplace restrictions and strikes at some transport companies have affected Australia Post and other freighters. It's made running a clothing business in Broken Hill in outback New South Wales very difficult. So we recently had a shipment come into our store from our supplier in Victoria. With tracking it, we found that it actually sat in Sydney for two weeks. It didn't even move. So what a, when a shipment would usually take not even a week to get here, it actually took four weeks this time. The latest challenge is a shortage of pallets needed to shift goods, now dubbed pallet gate. A worldwide shortage of timber and some companies hoarding the pallets that they do have has meant that they're in short supply. So much so that the major supermarkets have formed a pallet task force to try to sort it out. So what's the solution to all this? Well, one thing is certain, it needs to be global, which is why Joe Biden hosted a World Leaders Summit to try to fix it. I urge all of you, all of you to consider bolstering your stockpiles, critical to national security in your countries. But like so many challenges today, it isn't a problem any one of our nations can solve through unilateral actions. Coordination is the key. In the US, ports on the West Coast have moved to 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operations. Amazon and other giant retail employers like Walmart have also increased pay to try to keep workers. In the UK too, truck drivers are being offered more money to try to entice more people behind the wheel. We can't fix every single problem, but I feel confident that there'll be good provision of goods for everybody and we are working our way to remove blockages where we can. Pressure is building in Australia for the government to do more to address the problems. So we would like the government to turn their attention to this as being not just an immediate problem, but something in the medium and long term. So perhaps uh, the government can turn their attention to the efficiencies at each of the ports, making sure they're managed as effectively as possible um, and ensuring that that system is at least working uh, easily and efficiently. And as for how long this disruption will last, well, the good news is we should start to see some improvement by early next year. But that depends on vaccination coverage and the management of any COVID outbreaks. Realistically, we won't see supply chains back to normal for at least another year. And the only thing to do until then is to be patient.